Good happy Thursday evening. I'm Riley King and welcome to the Riley King Newscast. Let's get started. First up, recreational marijuana use officially illegal in border state Massachusetts. Let's take a listen to the video. From WMUR News 9. Best deals of the year during the Auto Fair year end event. Now you'll get our lowest price on every new Ford, Honda, Hyundai, Nissan, Volkswagen, and Subaru. View our entire inventory at autofair.com with eight convenient locations in Manchester, Nashua, Chelmsford, Stratton, Haverhill, and Plastow. So if you want our best deals of the year right now, Auto Fair makes it happen. Autofair.com. Auto Fair makes it happen. At 12.01 this morning, recreational marijuana possession became legal in Massachusetts. Understanding what that means, though, is still unclear even to law enforcement because this is all new territory. What is clear is that on this side of the border, nothing has changed. Welcome to Massachusetts, where it's now legal to possess, use, even grow recreational marijuana. Some there in support of the change, hesitating to speak on camera, but the new law definitely the buzz. Is it something people are talking about? Yes, definitely, definitely. Because we worry about drunk driving, never mind being high driving. DUI will not be okay. Other aspects of the law, though, not so cut and dry. What it means is people can possess up to an ounce of marijuana in public and a larger amount and cultivate it at home, you know, in the privacy of their own home. But I really want to emphasize you can't walk down the street smoking a joint. You can't be consuming it in public. Anyone 21 or older can possess up to an ounce in public, but not on school or correctional facility grounds. Residents can have up to 10 ounces in their homes and grow up to a dozen plants, but it can only be used in non-public locations and it's still not legal to buy or sell it, except at licensed medical use facilities. They're still looking at a year from now to get the regulations in place. Uh, at the soonest, you know, retail uh, establishments will be up and running January of 18. New Hampshire shares about 70 miles of border with the Bay State. The message from this side to the many who travel back and forth? The biggest message for mass people is nothing has changed in New Hampshire. So if they possess it, perhaps naively and bring it here, what happens? They get arrested, so people should be aware. New Hampshire remains the only state in New England where it is a crime as opposed to a violation level offense, but with it now legal in Massachusetts and soon to be in Maine, some believe that may change. Reporting live in Portsmouth, Jennifer Crompton, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that report. Judge rules child porn suspect can have limited internet access before trial. Let's take a listen to this video from WMUR News 9. Pre-owned vehicles, payments starting at $99 a month. Plus, all Auto Fair certified used vehicles come with a three-year, 100,000-mile warranty. Get fast, easy financing, and our goal is always 100% credit approval. With eight convenient locations, Auto Fair makes it happen. AutoFair.com. Auto Fair makes it happen. <laughs> Well, Gene Turcott was previously arraigned on those child pornography charges last month. Today in court, his lawyer asking the judge for leniency when it comes to his client's bail agreement. This is 18-year-old Charles Turcott. Prosecutors say back in October, the Wakefield resident obtained videos and images depicting a female who appeared to be under the age of 13 involved in sexual acts. Turcott was eventually arrested in November following a lengthy investigation. He now faces 10 Class A felony charges of possession of child pornography. 
Today, prosecutors say he waived his right to a probable cause hearing. It's very common for that type of a hearing to be waived uh, in uh, exchange for uh, full discovery uh, in order to speed things up at the Superior Court yeah. level. However, Turcotte's attorney did ask Judge James Panton to release some restrictions on his client's bail agreement. One of them to allow Turcotte to go online for educational reasons only, something the prosecution was strongly against. He's got to balance those needs for education. I understand that and I appreciate it, but the computers probably what got him into trouble in the first place. In the end, Judge Patton, given the okay for Turcotte to access the internet for educational purposes, but only under the condition of adult supervision. And Turcotte was granted permission to be around his stepbrother only in the presence of a responsible adult. The judge also ordering seized property that is not evidence to be returned to Turcotte's mother. If convicted, Turcotte could face 10 to 20 years in prison for each count. As for what comes next... The next process is going to be uh, indictment by a grand jury and then ultimately an arraignment at the yeah. Superior Court level. And now I did have a chance to speak with Turcotte's attorney following this hearing. He says he does not have a comment on his this case and neither does his client. We're live here in Meredith tonight, I'm Tim Cavalry, WMUR News 9. Okay, and... There you go on that report. Dylan Roof found guilty on all 33 counts in federal death penalty trial. Dylan Roof has been found guilty on all 33 counts in the federal trial in connection with the June 2015 shooting at the Charleston South Carolina Church. He showed no emotion as the verdict was read. Here's why it would be too easy for Verizon to walk away from the Yahoo deal. If Verizon wants out of acquiring Yahoo, it will have to prove the recently revealed hack of more 1 billion counts effectively changes the company's value. Intentional analysts shows Putin approved election hacking. Let's take a listen to this video from CNN. Tonight, the White House demanding that President-elect Trump accept rather than deny the intelligence community's assessment that Russia was responsible for hacking intended to impact the U.S. presidential race. Mr. Trump obviously knew that Russia was engaged in malicious cyber activity that was helping him and hurting Secretary Clinton's campaign. It might be time to not attack the intelligence community, but actually be supportive. However, Trump himself, who sources tell CNN is seeing the intelligence behind that assessment in his classified briefings, <laughs> continues to express doubts that Russia is responsible, tweeting this morning, quote, if Russia or some other entity was hacking, why did the White House wait so long to act? Why did they only complain after Hillary lost? Thank you very much. His transition team is now accusing the White House of trying to undermine his presidency. I'd say the continued efforts to try to deal legitimize the election. At a certain point, I've got to realize that the election from last month is going to stand, whether it's the, the recount or continued uh, questions along this line. Analysis of the digital footprint and intelligence, including from human sources, has led the intelligence community to conclude that Russian President Vladimir Putin personally approved of the hacking. This according to intelligence, congressional, and other administration sources. And there's only one decision maker, and that is Putin. Uh, to me, just on the basis of that very uh, circumstantial evidence, it's pretty clear that something of this magnitude had to go to the very top. Republican Senator Lindsey Graham tells CNN he now plans to introduce crippling new economic sanctions aimed at Putin himself. We're going to hit you and hit you hard. I'm going to introduce sanctions 
that will be bipartisan that names Putin as an individual, his inner circle, for not only hacking into our political systems, but trying to destabilize democracy throughout the world. And yet Trump supporter and former Congressman Jack Kingston was in Moscow this week, where he told businesses that Trump could reconsider existing sanctions imposed on Russia for its invasion of Ukraine. Sanctions, not something that the administration is going to lead with at all. The sanctions have been in place a while now. The administration could take a look and say, are the results what we were looking for? Okay, and there you go on that report. And that does it for the Riley King newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your Thursday night. Good night, everyone. Bye.